and welcome to Carolina News. I'm Caitlin Stansel. The nation's honeybee population has been failing since 2006 because of a mysterious condition called colony collapse disorder. But Derek is optimistic there's a comeback for the species, meaning more business for him and a future for bees in the Midlands. The game ended with Sutton on the free throw line with one second to go, sinking her shots and finishing the game 62-58. to Markeisha Grant talked about how the team rallied to pull out the Gamecocks' narrow win. The buildings that made up South Carolina College are now the modern heart of the campus, the Horseshoe. The buildings were constructed by slave labor and built by slave-made bricks. Jennings Nelson says she has complete faith in the officials working on the investigation. She asked anyone with any details of tips about the case to send them to the Columbia Police. While Henning says that training is top of the line, protesters still claim that the animals are mistreated. The U.S. Postal Service has been delivering since 1775, a year before the Declaration of Independence was even signed. But recent financial woes, including a $5 billion loss last year, have raised concerns about the future of the post office. Harriet Ward has more. Anaya Mazoros calls herself a cookie-baking grandma. Omelet. Today I'm baking cookies because my grandchildren are coming over after, after school today. But you may not find her in the kitchen. I baked these with the rays of the sun. The rays of the sun baked these cookies. Mazoros is a Columbia prepper who uses a solar oven to cook her meals. Part of my prepping was making sure that I could cook everything I normally cook in the house in this. So if we lose our power for whatever reason, um, whether it's, you know, natural or man-made disaster, whether it's short-term or long-term, I can still cook. A prepper is someone who is preparing for any kind of disaster, whether it be man-made or natural. Mazoros has been cooking on a solar oven for the past 20 years, all in the hopes of surviving a global pandemic or a devastating natural disaster. Things that make you afraid. What makes you tremble? If you're not afraid of tsunamis, don't prepare for them. If you're afraid of pandemics, prepare for them. She even has a go bag that would help her survive if she needed to get out of her house quickly. Scissors, snake bite kit. She's been contacted by the Discovery Channel, the History Channel, and National Geographic to be included in their shows. I'm preparing my family for the total destruction of the power grid. A devastating earthquake. A series of catastrophic terrorist attacks. Super volcano. But Mazoris declined because like many preppers, she doesn't want to be seen as an extremist. If you have life insurance, you're preparing not to live forever, you're a prepper. Uh, health insurance, you're planning on getting sick sooner or later. So everyone is a prepper to some degree. Mazora says even the government is telling the public they should be prepared. And the government is telling us we may not be coming. South Carolina Emergency Management's Derek Becker agrees that people should consider preparing. We don't want people to, to be overly concerned about preparing for an emergency or preparing for imminent doom, as it may say. We want people to, to take into account that y you have emergencies. They can happen any time of the day, anywhere in the state, and we want you to be ready for those. Missouri says that if everyone is prepared, they'll become part of the solution and not a part of the problem when it comes to surviving the unknown. Caitlin Stansel, Carolina News. Fonte Floor is a pre-Civil War plantation home. The most recent to live here? Two colonies of honeybees. An estimated 40,000 living within the walls. It's not good. I'd say this honey's been here for at least probably five or six years. Scott Derrick makes a living removing bees throughout South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. But he doesn't kill them. He takes them home. Try to protect them as much as you can. I'm here to save them, not to kill them. He uses a hose and specially made wooden boxes to safely trap the bees and give them a new home. The nation's honeybee population has been failing since 2006 because of a mysterious condition called colony collapse disorder. But Derek is optimistic there's a comeback for the species, meaning more business for him and a future for bees in the Midlands. Dr. Mike Hood works closely with bees at Clemson University and says the solution to colony collapse disorder is still a work in progress. So we have not got to the bottom of this colony collapse disorder. We're importing bees into the United States which show resistance to these problems. So therefore, uh, we're trying to work with the bees rather than trying to work against the bees. 
Derek says saving the bees is the most important and rewarding part of his job. For me, it's, it's a business and it helps provide for my family, but also it's a conviction that I have in order to, to save the honeybee. A conviction he loves to share with others. We'll buy it right off my mouth. Caitlin Stansel, Carolina News. Five Medal of Honor winners were honored during the basic combat training graduation of the 1st Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment at Fort Jackson. Staff Sergeant Salvatore Junta was the chosen commencement speaker. You great men and women about to go out and serve your country in ways that are amazing, ways that most people in these stands will never know the things that will be asked of you. Juta is the only living recipient of the Medal of Honor for service in Iraq or Afghanistan and the first awarded since Vietnam. He was presented the award in November of 2010 by President Barack Obama. And the two lead men were hit by enemy fire and knocked down instantly. When the third was struck in the helmet and fell to the ground, Sal charged headlong into the wall of bullets to pull him to safety behind what little cover there was. Staff at Fort Jackson say it's important to have the Medal of Honor recipients at graduation to inspire the graduates. I can think of no one better than Staff Sergeant Junta to address the graduating soldiers standing before you. Much like Staff Sergeant Junta, they are the soldiers of today and the heroes of tomorrow. I believe that the example that the recipients showed is that no matter what, as long as you do your job and fight through adversity on the battlefield, that they can do anything. Junta is very humble about his award and experience and says that he did what any soldier would do. What I did in Afghanistan was no different than what every soldier is expected to do in Afghanistan, and that's their job. I, my piece of the military has been so small and so insignificant and so, so average. Everything that I've done has not been stellar or amazing. It's just been on par with everyone else and what we expect everyone else to do. He says this graduation isn't about his actions or his award, but about the new recruits and their futures. This ceremony was not to honor me. This ceremony was to honor the basic trainees and, and their adventure and what they're about to embark on next. The honorees salute the newest crop of basic trainees as they march off to meet their futures. Caitlin Stansel, Carolina News. The U.S. Department of Agriculture claims that Felt Entertainment, the circus's corporate owner, allegedly violated animal rights. The circus settled out of court by paying $270,000 and agreeing to change their training methods. Ryan Henning has been working with the elephants for seven years and says that they are always looking to better their training routine. On a daily basis, we're doing whatever we can to, to higher our standards, uh, to change things for the better for the animals, if there are changes that could be made. While Henning says their training is top of the line, protesters still claim that the animals are mistreated. Protesters line the corner of Lincoln and Green Street opening night to educate people as they pass by. They chain them down and they prod them with sharp metal instruments in order for them to do unnatural tricks that they wouldn't do in the wild. It's really sickening what they do and I, I just want to tell people that this isn't right. Uh, animals cannot speak for themselves uh, so they don't have, there's no way to have a consensual contract with them. Ending attributes these claims to people misunderstanding what it takes to train an 8,000 pound animal. A horse. They, know, they might know a little bit about a dog or a cat at home, but they're uneducated when it comes to how we care for our animals. The new training programs are set to be in place by March 31st, but for the next few days, the greatest show on earth will seek to entertain the crowds of Columbia. Caitlin Stansel, Carolina News. Duncan Buell is a computer science professor at the University of South Carolina. In collaboration with two other USC professors, Dr. Robert Wyneth and Dr. Heidi Cooley, Buell is working to create an iPhone or iPad app called The Ghost of South Carolina College. The goal is an interactive experience uh, on the horseshoe with a mobile device with sensing GPS coordinates uh, and bringing the scholarship to you on the mobile device. It's not a game, but a historical interactive tour of the horseshoe when it was known as South Carolina College. Today's president's house was once the home of professors, where slaves cooked and cleaned. Behind the house, even today, remains an old slave quarters reminiscent of its past. You can't make a game out of slavery, so 
Uh, this is, I think, much more serious uh, than what something that you would want to call a game. Whether you wish to be a white student, in this case a fictional character, Stephen Rutledge, uh, or uh, one of the African Americans, uh, one of the slaves that would have been on campus. The question was, is it likely that slavery will eventually be abolished? And the logical outcome of that question was no, all things considered. Dr. Cooley says she hopes her work on this app can bring the history of the horseshoe into modern day light. We still see evidences of um, this history. It marks the campus, it marks the student population, it marks the community. Buell says the project is still a work in progress. Caitlin Stansel, Carolina News.